We can all be guilty of letting life's events affect our happiness. Whether it's a post-breakup week off the gym, or it's financial issues. But the truth is, we don't need to let life's events affect us in quite the same way. And life doesn't have to be like that. Today we're going to discuss one mindset change which is going to open the door to brand new opportunities, get you out of life's most challenging moments. Life is hard, and we all have those friends or people that we know who remind us of that very regularly. When life consistently presents you with challenges and curveballs and problems, it's easy to understand how some people get to the mindset that life happens to them and that they don't have any control. This fatalistic view of life often leads people to sit back and give up the last elements of control that they have over their life. And it often leads to a damaging negative mentality that affects not just them, but those around them. Empowerment is a buzzword at the 21st century. It's something many people talk about getting through simple things like what they wear. But empowerment isn't confined to your wardrobe. What does true empowerment look like? When difficult events happen in life, we have a decision to make. How are we gonna let this affect us? The Stoics have a very simple view. No events in life are inherently good or bad. And to be able to change reality, or at least reality for ourselves, we have to accept the current reality. Our faults, the faults of the world, and that unfortunate events happen to people more often than we'd like. There's so much that's out of our control in this world. The only way to truly feel empowered is to focus on what you can control and how you perceive and deal with challenging situations. Which of these approaches do you think is gonna yield the best results? Thinking of losing your job as a sign that you're a bad person or a bad employee, or that you're doomed to fail, seeing as an opportunity to pursue a new career path that you're truly passionate about, or just to work on yourself and find points of improvement that can make you better for the future. We all know people who take the first road, right? the people who immediately jump to a negative mindset. When you make the problem larger than it is, you make it impassable. It removes the emphasis on ourselves to look internally and change and put any meaningful work into self-improvement. People find it much easier to talk about changing the world than to actually change themselves. Many people would see my past as a story of failure or hardship but I see it as a luxury, because not many other people would have had the luxury that I did to fail as fast and as hard, spiraling me into five-figure gambling debt, my family almost falling apart because of it. Those experiences, as horrible as they were, and as much as they affected those I loved around me, they prepared me, they gave me this mindset, through practice, through trial, through error, and through struggle. This video won't magically change your state of mind. Nobody ever said that self-improvement was easy, as I've just said, I had to fail many, many times and go through some real hardship to be able to shift my mindset. It requires honesty about your own failings and an acceptance that some things just are. And you're gonna have to deal with that. But the simple tip I'm gonna give you next will deliver the same benefits as the hardship and struggle that I went through without all the financial ruin and depression part. Before I give you that tip, I just want to ask you to like this video if you found any of this insightful, relatable, or if you want to see more content like this. Usually, we only deal with life's difficult situations as and when they occur. For some people, that can take longer than others. Some people only deal with a few situations every now and then, every year, two years, three years. Something big might come along that stirs their world up. For others, it can be a constant struggle. But for those of us who aren't forced to learn on the job, there are ways to better prepare. Because we've all seen it for ourselves. People who are absolute machines when everything's going their way, when things are going right, they're just on a roll. And then as soon as life throws them a curveball, it crumbles. Resilience is one of the most important traits in a career, in your personal life, whatever it might be. You can go for interview after interview and not get the opportunity you want. You can struggle to get your way to the top and have to wait months or years longer than expected. In health and fitness, it's the motivation to get yourself to the gym and pay your dues when you've got a pile of unpaid parking tickets at home. So how do you build resilience? Well, Gary Vaynerchuk has an interesting if not controversial way of doing this basically i'll let gary explain for himself Who's, who do you love the most in the world my family good <laughs> every day make in the in like literally once a day genuinely sit there for five minutes and make pretend one of them got shot in the face now this may be some 
pretty clickbait, shock tactic, social media food, but that doesn't mean he's wrong. The Stoics have a practice. It's called turning the problem upside down. And it's all about trying to find the opportunity in the misfortune, whether that means losing your job or losing a member of your family. It's a way of actively preparing for life's toughest situations without having to directly deal with the hardship at the time. It's a widely adopted practice in the corporate world. We all know of disaster planning. So why don't we do this so much in our personal lives? It allows us to approach these issues without the emotional haze that often comes with these situations. We often end up acting on anger or sadness, whatever it might be, rather than acting logically. So every day, every other day, every week, I want you to write down a new problem and work out how you can turn it on its head and find opportunity in the misfortune. A good place to start with this is to write down all of the issues in question and then cross out the ones you have no control over because no matter what you do, you're not going to change them. Then tackle the ones you do have control over. Lost your job. Well, I've seen it many times where people end up with a nice pay rise and a much better employer in the process. Ruined relationship. What could you be doing now that could lead to that down the road? How can you act now to prevent that possible future? But also, is it inherently bad that a relationship ends? Does that not simply point you in another direction? This will over time form a habit of solutions oriented thinking. And trust me when I say that over time, it almost creates an autopilot response. It allows you to objectively identify the issues, even if they are personal to you, even if it's your problem. It's practicing mindfulness, being able to step back from a situation, analyze it, understand where your failings might be, where the things out of your control are just playing their part. And once the facts are laid out before you, you are faced with the decision, what do I do? Do I let it get to me emotionally or do I seize the opportunity? Do I work out how to make this work in my favor? And that ability to analyze ourselves for self-improvement, not self-deprecation, is rare. We do it all too often in this world. We look at ourselves through a critical point of view, not in any effort to improve or to become better people or to have a sense of empowerment that we have control over our lives and who we are as people, but to validate other people's opinions about us. This exercise has many benefits from being able to handle disasters in a much more together way, through to building up a brutal honesty about who you are as a person, which miraculously removes the issues of other people judging you. I can't give specifics, but my partner recently had a interesting work situation. She's being bullied, harassed, basically, and that's as far as I guess I can properly say. She'd been working up to this role for years. She was finally going to become a solicitor. This kind of job was difficult to find, and she'd found one, but it was taking a toll. After plenty of issues and the final straws being drawn, she handed in her resignation. She threw away the opportunity to take the last step on her educational career and finally become a solicitor of her own. Now, this wasn't the first time that she'd faced issues of bullying or discrimination or harassment, and this obviously weighed down on her. As any other person would, she began to doubt herself and whether it was an issue of her own aptitude. She believed that she wouldn't get this kind of opportunity again. You know, that it was the end of the world. The reality is that she works in a cutthroat sector, which is stuck in some very outdated practices, which has a lot of issues culturally. And her misfortune wasn't unlike many others. She had a string of bad luck. Those who obviously weren't directly emotionally affected by this, so anyone but her, um, you know, could see that and could see that there were things here that were outside of her control. There was no way of fixing the situation. The industry is the way it is for now. And she had to find a way to get through this and to uh, to make it work for the better. And, you know, people tried to find positives in the situation. My family, from a point of moral support, emotional support, trying to make her feel positive. And myself, probably just through the autopilot I developed after years of dealing with horrible situations. The truth is, yes, she'd been through the worst of the industry. She dealt with it time and time again, and each time, her approach and her mentality was stronger, but she works in an industry which hinges strongly on personal reputation. That industry is also stuck in prehistoric ways of doing business, with toxic cultures, with bullying behavior, 
and of an elitist culture which is counterproductive to young people just simply trying to take the first step into a daunting and challenging career. The truth is, she now has another battle to fight. Something deeper than just financial gain, something emotional, something personal to change the industry for the better. It may have been out of her control in the short term, but it damn sure isn't in the long term. She used this both to fuel and to form the next step in her career. She can join and spearhead movements to make this industry better. She can tell her story through the media and across events, building a personal brand and reputation that, as we said, is so important in the legal sector. That her story could genuinely help others. Many people are in the same boat. She's not alone, which may be difficult for people to understand because they love to think of themselves as a unique victim, the, the only one who could possibly face this kind of cruelty, but there's an empowerment and an amazing feeling in knowing that you're not alone in this and that your experience could one day help others to get through similar situations or just to make sure that they never have to go through that situation in the first place. There are positives that we can draw out of any situation and myself included, I've had to do that or it would mean that my world would come crumbling down around me, is it? Almost did many, many times. Create one problem today, work on fixing it, so that if it comes tomorrow, you'll be prepared. Watch this video next if you're interested in stoicism and its answers to all of life's biggest issues. Don't forget to like and subscribe.